Cool. Welcome back. Uh, now that we've handled that part of our application, we have been able to load up an app. We can now type in messages to any of these people here. Actually, let's do one thing really quickly before I get into the, the next part of confirming this. Notice that when I click on each person here in the console, it displays their name and it goes to get all their messages. And we, e we even have their access to their name here, but we don't change this name up here. Have you noticed that? Um, in our index.html, that is saved as, let me find it. Yeah, right here. It has uh, an A, href equals hashtag blah, 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 that whole thing. Um, why don't we just give it an ID? Let's give this an ID equals recipient name. And then anytime we click on one of those users, we change the recipient name to the actual user we're talking to. Because I'm pretty sure that's what the actual Android Messenger app does, right? Yes? Cool, I trust you. Uh, you don't have it? I, I trust you less. You know what? We're still doing it anyway. Regardless, uh, all we really need to do is whenever we click right here, uh, where is it? Displaying text from, just right above that, say document dot query selector, uh, let's see, recipient name dot inner HTML is equal to the username. Because we even actually have the username already right there. It's a super easy way to do it. Or we can do what we've done before and store it in a variable right above this function, or usually up at the top, we could say recipient name equals, and then just use the recipient name right there. And so actually now, whenever we click on a user, we should get their name to appear right up here. And we do. Oh, look, that's pretty nice. Um, so now we know exactly who it is we're talking to at any time. So I can talk to myself, one of my versions, say, hey, how are you? But notice how even though those messages appear here, they don't go anywhere. And we don't actually see them. There it is. Hey, how are you? And so that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, we should probably handle that in this next lesson. How does that sound? Um, and this, this next one's going to be like amazingly fun and cool, but it's going to get wild. So again, I will stop after this video and I'll explain this to all of you exactly what's happening here. And if you're watching these videos again, I apologize that I'm not explaining it to you. Um, but in the essence of time, I do have this class to teach and so I'm going to keep teaching this class. But if you ever have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments and I will explain things to you later when you come back to this. Or just if you're my student, come back and talk to me and we'll figure it out together. So this async function that we just created here, this update UI for current conversation, you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't update the UI. And so I don't know if that's a good name for it yet. Uh, we could either change its name or we could actually use it to update the UI. And so that's what I think we should do. Um, so currently what we have going on here, and I'm just going to, well, actually, I think this is a nice little display. It shows the sent and received messages from each person. Um, and it, every time you click on them, it'll bring up all the sent and received messages from them. And so if I go into my app and I sign into someone else's account, let's sign into, let's go with my uh, Jeffrey Astor one, my school Gmail. Oh, uh-oh. Notice another problem here that we should probably fix really quickly. Whenever I sign in with somebody else, it doesn't remove all the contacts from my contact list. Notice that? So then it re-puts a bunch of those contacts in there. We should probably fix that too. We should probably say that whenever somebody signs in or signs out, whenever we update the UI for sign out or update the UI for sign in, the first thing we should do there is we should set the contact list the inner HTML equal to an empty string. Cool. So let's do that right here. We just say, because this cons contact list is right there, see that? I probably want to put that up at the top. Just like I want to put most of these up at the top, and I've been bad about doing that. Um, I've just been throwing them all over the file. That's actually not how I usually do it. I usually do it like this. I just throw them all in there. And I actually don't need these const.logs anymore, so I'm getting rid of these as well. So just cleaning up my code a little bit. This is, again, pretty important. Um, if you don't clean up your code, you'll be fine. But the second the file gets really big, 
you're gonna get lost and you're gonna spend more time searching for things than actually writing code. And the more you slow yourself down, the less fun and you have writing code. And so the less enjoyable things are, the less likely you are to continue doing it. I don't know how many times I've like started a project and then just been like, ugh, this is tough, I'm done. So resiliency aside, you should probably just start by cleaning up your code whenever you get a chance. And so I'm just gonna say that inner HTML is equal to an empty string here. And that's nice, oh, I have another one right there. I have a couple of these, I'm sure. I'm just gonna keep cleaning them up and throwing them up at the top right here. Um, and again, I should probably throw them up above this too, but it's nice, to, I like to initialize some of my uh, materialized stuff at the very top, usually if I'm gonna use the materialized library. Cool, so this is lovely. I don't think I need this anymore. Um, because this code is starting to look pretty nice. Here we go. Here we go. This is looking lovely. And then I have all my functions here. Just clean this up a bit. And so when we write our code here, what we're going to want to do is, let's actually just make sure this worked. Okay, cool. Let me sign into another one. Uh-oh, you know what? I don't think this might, actually, this might not work. And let's see if it does. But I have a feeling it won't. Ah, it didn't. Notice how when we sign in, because we only are updating the UI for sign out. However, the way our app works currently is you can just sign in a bunch of times. So whenever we sign in, we should probably, before we, we should probably set the inner HTML. Actually, that's probably not a good place to do it, huh? We should probably do it before we get all the users. So whenever we get all the users right here, before we get the users, do we have to get users, get users friends right here? Let's actually... When we're getting users friends, let's first set the inner HTML equal to an empty string and then handle everything. And that actually should work. Let's find out. Ah, lovely. So what all I did is that in our get users friends function, I added this contact list dot inner HTML is equal to an empty string so that this whole list clears out any time we're about to get someone's new friends. Yeah, yeah, no new friends. Well, in this case, we need new friends sometimes. So that is just, it. that is what it is. Cool. Okay, now on to the fun stuff, uh, depending on what you find fun, on to the fun stuff. And so now, did we update both of these functions down here? Yeah, both of these functions are returning arrays that we store in sent and received messages. What's cool about that is here we see those messages. We see everything, right? So we see the sent and received messages for our first friend and it should update, oh, you know what? It doesn't update their name, their very first name. I wonder why. This is just gonna be a cleanup video, I guess. Uh, let's see. Well, it's ah, right here. So we update the UI for current conversation where do we update the UI for the current conversation? That's this right here, right? So we should probably, when we update the UI for the current conversation, we should probably do the same thing. We should set the inner HTML equal to the user's name, right? So in this case, we just called it name. So that whenever somebody, whenever we load this up, it immediately pulls up the name, boom, of our first user. Cool. And that seems to work. Lovely. So you know what, I'm actually gonna end this video here because this was more of a clean up all of our code so that things work the way they're supposed to video. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of it next.